we want to be clear that you you tend to have shown up in the world of temporal legal um, how man runs his system of law, which we call legal, which is all based on money and fiction and presumption and assumption, but you showed up in that and your parents put truth in on a legal document that mixes truth with fiction. Okay. So we have to at least understand that you had nothing to do with that. That just happened. And there's no law, even in legal, that will allow you um, as a child or a minor uh, to be responsible for anything in the world of legal, which is contract law. Even citizenship is contract law because it comes with duties, debts, and obligations. So even though your God-given real spiritual name, the spirit, uh, basically showed up on this document, the surname is the legal title uh, that is being at least in assumption being claimed or presumed to be what's going on. And of course, they frame at least in the Ontario record, they frame this incident, but there's no way a child could be trespassing or involved in this. I go over these things over and over and over because I don't think at times it's reaching through to the heart. It may got partially into the mind, but it's not reaching the moral condition of the heart. That's the knowledge of God. That's what he gave you. You're not an animal. You're not a legal fiction. You have a conscience, the knowledge of God, to know the difference between right and wrong. This document begins the journey between right and wrong, between what is truth versus what is fiction. So, when we go and look at the terms assume, assumption, unassuming, pretend, pretension, they all lead together in some connection so you can comprehend where the journey goes, some of this is dealing with the fiction, the legal surname. The other is dealing with truth. When we go through the unassuming part, you want to be unassuming, okay, in the spiritual realm of God, because God's people are unassuming. They are there for the naked truth. We're going to get to this in a second, but I'm going to read you the word assumption in law. The act of conceding or taking for granted. Now remember, there's many legal grants that come to someone, even if they're applying for a legal grant from the state, but they come with duties, debts, and obligations. They're not free money. There's nothing free in the money world. It comes with indebtedness to the one who's providing it with certain terms and conditions for its use. Just as the use of the surname comes with duties, debts, and obligations. It was not free, as we already have established under its definition in law, that the surname, which comes from cognum, cognomen, agnomen, means a debt or a debtor in Black's Fourth under the definition of name. Go to it and follow the trail. You will see what I'm talking about. You have to look in the eyes of the legal to see how you're being viewed when you participate in legal. Do not ask the legal to view you in the spiritual when you're assuming a legal title. So we go further on this. It says, a synonym, of course, is inference, probability, and presumptuous. So we're going to go to Basically, presumptuousness leads to uh, pretentious because it is the opposite of not assuming. Because unassuming means not pretentious. So it says, see the word pretend. Interestingly, these words are very simple for you to follow 
the pattern and what's there. You don't have to be a rocket scientist in this uh, search that we're doing here. You just need to take the time to break it down. Maybe break it down on, on a, a large board like this. Break it down on a number of pieces of blank paper on a desk. And then fill out the word meanings and then see how they relate to what's going on. Because you'll understand it. So when we go unassuming, it means not pretentious, which is the opposite of assumption or, ass or assuming something. It's unassuming. Not pretentious. And it says, see the word pretend. Now we go to pretend, we're going to go to the book of Peter all of a sudden. In his warning, he says that those that are part of the pretend world will make feigned, will, will, use, will make use of you with feigned words. They will make merchandise of you with feigned words. So when you look up fiction in the Black's Law 10th, Breaking down to the Latin word fictio, which is fiction. Fictio, right in brackets in Black's 10th Law Dictionary, says to feign. So they're going to make merchandise of you in a fictitious world with feigned words, which is what a surname is. A surname is a fiction. It is a name added to one's real name when you break it down even in a simple Canadian gauge dictionary they put in the public school system. If it is a name added to one's real name, it would automatically be taken at that moment to mean it is not real. It is fictitious. It is a fable. It is pretend. It's imagination. It's not real. That's why the Magi are in the court systems only dealing with people that have used an I Magi nation name of the Magi straight jurisdiction, which controls that. If you're doing what is good, according to Romans 13, you wouldn't be using an imagination name. You'd be brought there before governors and kings for his namesake. You wouldn't be walking in there voluntarily using a name like that and expecting that no ramifications are going to come upon you. If you're speaking in fiction or a lie, expect the sword of evil to work against you according to what Paul spoke about in Romans 13. Not like these fake Christian organizations today that are telling people that that scripture at Romans 13 means they can play a fiction with no, no results against them. That makes no sense. If you're playing in the fiction, then you're lying. That's not what Romans 13 said. When it said be subject to them, you'd let them know who you are and who you're not. But you certainly would not be assuming a fiction and expecting the sword of justice to not come against you. It says do what is good and receive courtesy. Because the world of legal does not understand truth when you're using fiction. It only sees the fiction. And therefore it bears the sword of justice against you. Do what is good, you receive courtesy. Courtesy and favor is grace. It's not a right. It is a courtesy of them recognizing the supremacy of God in that courtroom. So now when we go to, again, we're going to go over the word pretend, to feign, to simulate, to hold out as real, which is false or baseless. Pretension. The claim made to a thing. They're talking about a legal thing. This is out of Black's Law. Under pretension. The claim made to a thing which is part which a party believes himself entitled to demand, but which is not admitted or adjudged to be his. Are you coveting? Are you in violation of one of the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not steal. How many things could I go into? You're basically using something or claiming something that's not yours. And then you're asking for remedy. It's an oxymoron. It's ridiculous. And there's people that I speak with 
They want me to do seminars to help them continue in the wrong and benefit from it further. Claiming a little bit of this and a little bit of that, that they've been violated under supposed human rights, which is another term that's a fiction of a man or a woman. It's a human, a colorable man, a monster who cannot inherit, has no covenant with God, is not part of reality, is just part of evil, part of indebtedness. We better wake up, brothers and sisters. There's not much time on your side right now. I'm not going to tickle your ears with flowery words. I'm not going to tell you that something that is false is true because it benefits you in the moment while you've held property that way. How much is your life worth? 